So we got all these city multis, right? Boom, 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 boom. Fun shit. Um, in my opinion, this is a very poor use of these. You look at how much roof space we still have. So uh, our unit here only does two indoors. I'll show you what code it was throwing. Um, and this is, this is a tricky one, okay? So we're gonna go inside. Error code 5115, okay? So remember that. This is where it gets confusing. Okay, so we're going back to this outdoor unit, right? And you're like, okay, 5115. What do you do? You go and you look at the manual, right? Oh, fuck. So that's what I'm gonna show you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up 5115, okay? Is that we do it? All right, that gives us nine results, right? So now here's where it gets confusing, okay? So we have 5115, compressor shell bottom temperature sensor failure. Okay, so that would lead us to believe that we have an issue out here at our compressor, right? But once again, it's not that simple. We need to look at the address where that's coming from. And uh, the address is 52. Okay, this is 6'6". Six, six. So, if we scroll down a little bit more, man, this is gonna be hard. I don't have a good chest mount or anything. We go, go down a couple more options, and there is, as stupid as it sounds, there is a secondary 5115. So if we get the 5115 coming from our BC controller, which is our branch box, then it is our LEV3 outlet temperature. I think that this is stupid. I don't think they should have duplicate codes. It'd be nice if they didn't, but they do. So um, long story short, um, we came out here and uh, someone charged this unit up because it was throwing a 5115 code and going off on low pressure. So we added some refrigerant and then we had to recover it back out. So um, we, uh, the previous company had told them that it was the outdoor unit, their misters, and that uh, it needed the, there was a two month lead time. Um, I, well, yeah, we'll just, Alex came out here and uh, he uh, thought it was low on charge. And so he got approval to add it and he did. And obviously that didn't work. Um, I would have, well, he told, he told me the symptoms and I told him it sounded like it was low and he thought it was low. So I wasn't really arguing with him. He said, hey, it's, this, it's giving me a thermistor code, but we thought maybe that it was just giving the thermistor code an error because it was dropping down to like 50 PSI, which it was, and then shutting off. It's pretty typical symptom of these things when they're low on charge, unfortunately. Our branch box is here above the ceiling. There we go. So they did not leave us very good access to it. And uh, this is where we're at with it. We did test the thermistor at this branch box from this access because we have. Hello. That right there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell real good, but that little disconnected wire plug right there. One of those is our LEV3 thermistor, what it says, and uh, it's reading open line. So we can confirm that the thermistor is bad. According to this, well, it shouldn't be open line, so. Um, we do have a thermistor in stock that we're going to have to splice in because it's not got the same wire plug, but it should be the same value. So we're going to go pick it up and get it swapped out. And I think we're going to have a happy customer because they have been over a month without AC at this point. So, yeah. This, uh, these were all twisted up. You can tell, you can see it's twisted, but it was like so much more. It was like that. 
So I think that this dates back to time of install because no one's been up here. I don't know why they would mess with these, but these were both hanging out. And he said that this guy said that it never really worked that well. So, um, I mean, if the EEV sensors aren't on here, I guess that would make sense. So the system's not operating properly. So um, we're gonna do something with this guy. Oh, and yeah, look, we also got this ceiling tile off. Um, we had the maintenance guy come and uh, mess with our fire sprinkler, which we probably, I probably shouldn't be this close to this thing, huh? <laughs> That oily? I think it is. Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, that's just full of oil. Uh, that's not good. Alright, well that's another issue. Is this thing got it dead? Yeah, this, look at this. This is just full of oil. So we got a refrigerant leak there. The mic is going. So yeah, we got, the, this is our new one. We got it pulled through. It was actually kind of a pain in the ass being honest um, but it could have been much worse so and we got our old we got this thing cut here these are our old wires and um, uh, the only thing we got to do is get this uh, old little thermistor thing out come on buddy I think we'll need it I don't think this is gonna work no no it's going to ah fuck That went flying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good thing it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that was just the metal shell for it. Oh, gotcha. How much was this sign? Seven bucks. <laughs> they I don't. Mean, they don't need to know that. I mean We're gonna charge them a lot of labor <laughs> to do this. Unfortunately for them, this is this one's for our YouTube viewers, but uh. Seems like you can't find anybody else that likes uh, likes the grind of uh, service. <laughs> so if anybody watching this is in San Diego <laughs> and knows service work, we are hiring for service only. If you, uh, we we may be in the market for installers too, but. We just have endless service work. This thing's going, yeah. And uh, me and Alex are the only ones really doing it. So, we got wire nuts, right? Yeah, right here. Two of them on there. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's like uh, we are mainly a service company. And as you can see, me and Alex are the ones here right now. And it's always me and Alex there. <laughs> Technically, we have like seven field guys or something like that on payroll. But on an average day, we might have like four to five guys working, including me and Alex. Because uh, they don't like doing, they don't like being versatile. Okay, so technically, that's our fix. And this has just got to go back into its home, which is right here. You little bitch. Okay. You want to take it? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so this thing, we are on, guys. No air codes. We're going to just got to clean this up a little bit. And we've already cooled down three degrees in there. And we just turned these guys on. Um, before, it would only run for like a minute or two, usually, right? Yeah. And, then, and it wasn't even running right when it would run. It would run with low pressure. And do you want to pull up pressures? Come on, baby. Let's go. 
There it is. There it is. Oh, so, there we are. So cool got up. But yeah, I mean, it'll self-regulate. Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah. we know we have a known refrigerant leak here. Look at this. Yeah. So this is all just, that's full of oil. There. That's full of oil right there. So, yeah, very yeah it's pretty, uh, pretty gnarly. Fucking funny how little I care about like getting the oil and stuff on me now. Oh, dude, yeah, look at my fucking shirt. I know, I'm always like gross. PVC so. Okay, cool. Then, uh, look at this weather. All right, this repair. Wow, I look, I look crazy right now. I'm, I'm finishing editing this YouTube video, and I just don't think I went into enough d detail in the backstory of this uh, service. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel like I want to do enough detail on this one, on kind of the whole story. Um, there's two things I wanted to kind of hit on. Um, the first thing that make, made the diagnosis really weird from Alex, the, the first thing was that um, it ran. So typically if it gave a thermistor code like this, it would do it immediately. So um, since it was, it ran for two hours and he charged it and it didn't throw a code for that time. But because the thermistors were pulled off of the, like evidently it seems like uh, sometime at construction, the thermistors, someone messed with the thermistors. This unit's eight years old. I don't know how long that guy had owned the condo for, but the, um, he said it never worked well. So I, I would imagine that someone, when they first built the place, was messing with the branch box for some reason. And um, they uh, they didn't put the thermistors back in, so I don't think it's ever worked right. It threw the thermistor code a couple times, and then it didn't throw it again, and he charged it up, and then it didn't fix the problem, so we pulled out the amount that we put in. Now, the other thing I want to hit on is um, we were the third company to go work on this thing. Uh, both the other companies, one of we're, we have no formal Mitsubishi factory training on this. We're actually, me and Alex are both scheduled to do it. Um, but uh, one of the companies is the only uh, Mitsubishi certified uh, VRF company in San Diego County. And the other one is a Mitsubishi residential company like us. And both of them, saw the code and quoted new outdoor thermistors. Um, obviously that's a, that's a misdiagnosis. And um, I think Alex got a tunnel vision on the refrigerant problem uh, because it was going off on low pressure. Like the pressure was going down to like 50 PSI or something. Um, but as you see, once we got the thermistor problem fixed the pressures regulated it does have a pretty major refrigerant leak and i can't i can't imagine that it's been recharged several times but um i don't think that uh it, it's not low enough where it's not working it's actually working very good now so uh we're at, we're gonna quote a repair on it um and i would imagine they're gonna approve it but um we're in talks with this building about becoming their uh, primary hvac vendor now hopefully that works out um and yeah, if, uh, if you got some Mitsubishi VRF stuff in San Diego, let us know. We'll come fix it.